Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be carrying out a water pump and thermostat replacement on my uh, on my one series uh, BMW. This is the 123D, so it has the N47 two liter engine. Um, and yeah, the, uh, the water pump on this particular car uh, has been on there for about four years and I want to replace it purely as a preventative measure. Now, I've only ever broken down twice in my life both times in BMWs as it goes and both times it was caused by a water pump failure so I learned from that and what I prefer to do nowadays is give the water pump fitted to the car a certain amount of time um, before I carry out a replacement now it's about four years old four years is long enough for me and the price of a brand new water pump isn't that high uh, and it's certainly very good insurance um, to avoid breaking down in the future so that's what I'm going to do here is the uh, here is a water pump for the uh, for this car. As you can see, it's just a just a piece of cast alley uh, with a pulley on and an impeller on the inside. Here you can see um, a brand new gasket. I've uh, I've just popped it into its little recess. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much all it is. Uh, all there is to it. This here is um, the mounting surface for the thermostat housing. Now. Whilst we're doing this, I'm also going to replace the thermostat. And the thermostat is in this little box here. I've got a new gasket for it because that needs to be replaced as well. And here is the thermostat itself. So, obviously, um, if you're going to all the effort of replacing the water pump, you might as well do this as well because you, you've got to replace the, uh, the seal anyway. So, uh, why, why, you know, why not? Um, Worth noting that the thermostat itself does play a role in uh, DPF regeneration and, and that kind of thing. Uh, if, the, uh, if the engine does not get up to temperature, I think um, it's either 74 or 75 degrees, I think is the, uh, is the threshold that the engine coolant needs to be at in order to, for a uh, DPF regen to be uh, carried out by the car. If it doesn't reach that threshold, it won't, uh, it won't do it. So um, having a fully serviceable th uh, thermostat uh, again, we'll, uh, we'll assist with that. Anyway, less of the waffling on. What I need to do is uh, get the car in the air um, because I need to take the under tray off so that I can get a catch, uh, catch pan underneath because we will lose a little bit of coolant doing this. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get her up in the air, get the, uh, the under tray off, get the catch can underneath and then we can begin the job. Okay, as you can see, we've got the car up in the air. We've got our catch pan underneath, uh, which will catch any coolant as we remove the water pump, because obviously removing the water pump, we will lose coolant. Um, it's an inevitability. Right, what we're actually looking at here is this part. I've got my finger on it now. Uh, this is the pulley for the water pump. Hopefully you can make that out on the camera. And also here is the thermostat housing. Um, just there, I've got my torch right on it now. That is a thermostat housing. As you can see, we haven't got a great deal of room to, uh, to work down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some room. Now, um, in order to do that, I'm gonna remove this plastic cover here. We'll remove the plastic cover off the top of the, uh, off the, you know, the decorative one off the top of the engine. Um, uh, the pipe that goes from this uh, duct into the airbox. And then we will also remove the fan and its, and its shroud. It's electrical, it comes off pretty, pretty easily um, so what we're going to do we're going to start with this um, this uh, this top cover simply held in with a couple of t20 torque screws so it comes off nice and simple I love this uh, this little this little panel here on this one series it's like a little tool tray you can keep your screws uh, safe in <laughs> okay so it, it like clips in at the front there, like, like that. So it just comes up there and it'll pop off the duct and it goes to the airbox. Pop that down to one side. Right, we'll get this off. This is held in with some like plastic molded clips and a bit of 
bit of force and she'll come off. You can see the clips there, if you push them in, it'll come off pretty straightforward. So as you can see, we've, we've already made ourselves a little bit of room uh, to maneuver. What I'll do next is pull the top cover off, because that literally is just held in um, by these here, engage it with these little these little balls here. It's pretty uh, pretty simple. So yeah, give it a good yank and it will come off. It needs a good clean, I think, before we put that back on. Right, pop them to one side. Okay, as you can see, we're, we're getting there with making ourselves some room to work. What I'm gonna do next is remove this fan and it comes off pretty easily. There's a Torx bolt up in this corner. And I think that's the only one, but um, it'll become, uh, it will no doubt become apparent as we go through. And again, T20. I'm pretty sure this is the only screw. And then there's a couple of like um, sprung little tabs uh, down the, uh, just here's one. As you can see, just here, you can see this little, this little tab that I'm springing backwards and forwards. That allows the whole radiator, um, the fan assembly to come up like so, as you can see. And yeah, it's, it is the only, only the one screw. What we do need to do is disconnect the electrical connector, like so. And then the whole thing comes out. And there we go. Pretty simple, really. Okay, let me pop that to one side and then we'll have a look at uh, the space we've made for ourselves. Okay, as you can see, We've got a hell of a lot of room to work with now. We can get access to the water pump perfectly well. This is the tensioner. Um, I replaced this tensioner actually in a video just over a year ago. Um, we do need to take the tension off the belt in order to get it off. And here's the thermostat and its housing. Um, so as you can see, yeah, we've got absolutely cracking access to all of that. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take the tension off of the auxiliary belt. And to do that, all I'm gonna do, this is a uh, 16 mil put it on and rotate it clockwise and as you can see the whole assembly moves and then we can just pop the belt off and then simply relax the tension now one thing i will say is it's worth at this point remembering the uh the routing for your um belt because even myself, uh, I've done this quite a few times and even then I sometimes, when it comes to putting the belt back on, I'm like, how the hell does it go again? So it's worth um, either take a picture or, you know, uh, make a mental note uh, or even just get a sheet of paper, draw the circles for each of the wheels and then do a, do a little um, diagram of the, uh, of the routing of the belt. It makes it simple and makes it much easier when you come to reassemble it. Uh, just a little, uh, just a little tip. Right. What we're going to look at next is actually removing the uh, the water pump and um, the thermostat uh, itself. And what we're gonna do first is we are going to disconnect the coolant hose from the thermostat. Right then, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this hose. Now this hose goes to the lower um, radiator connection and comes from the thermostat. So obviously once the thermostat opens, it allows the coolant to flow into the radiator. What we're gonna do is we're going to pop this clip just here, like so. And then this hose will pop off. Now we are gonna lose coolant here, so I've positioned, I've positioned the uh, bucket underneath. And there we go. So what, what we've actually lost there is what is in the hose, because it's not gonna drain out the radiator at this stage. And obviously the thermostat is closed because the engine is stone cold. So we're not gonna to lose too much, but obviously when we take the water pump off, we will lose quite a bit, because we'll lose everything that's in the block. Well, well, certainly everything that's in the head anyway. Right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some uh, sockets out, and we're gonna start removing bolts for the water pump. Right. Um, if we get the brand new one, what we can do is we can look at where the holes are uh, for the bolts. So there's seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that obviously sits in the car in that sort of orientation. So um, we'll get our socket out. They're, uh, they're, they're only 10 mil, 10 mil little bolts. I can see one just there. 
my fingers on it right now. Um, and then we'll start uh, we'll start disconnecting the uh, the water pump from the cylinder head by removing those seven bolts. So that is the next step. Right then, there's the first one. Let's get it cracked off. They won't be tight. They're only done to about ten newton meters. They're only little M6 bolts. They're not very uh, they're not very hench. So when we go put them back in, we don't want to over tighten them. There's one. Two. Right, what I'll do, I will carry on taking all these bolts out, all seven of them, and then I'll bring you back in when we're done. Okay, and there is the last one. Now that last one I took out of here and it was incredibly difficult to get to because at the bottom of the EGR system, there's this little stub that sticks out. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that is, um, to be perfectly honest. However, it seems to be in the way of that last, uh, that last machine screw. So bear that in mind, it is a little bit difficult to get to, but obviously doable. Okay, so that's all seven of those uh, removed. What we can do now is withdraw the water pump from the cylinder head. Okay, so we've got all the uh, we've got all the bolts removed, and we're obviously now in a position where we can remove the water pump from the cylinder head. Before we do that, though, I just want to quickly discuss this. Now, here we have a vacuum control, um, and this little post here, which I said a moment ago, I wasn't sure what it was. And what I did was I had to look into it because I figured that that was something to do with this, and that there was something missing. And there is. Off the bottom of this there should be a little lever there's a rod that goes up the inside uh, of this up into the um, into the flow of the uh, the EGR and obviously this vacuum controls it now um, I guess uh, it must be stuck in the open position because the car's not complaining about it so uh, it's just so yeah it's not um this, that's the reason why I didn't realize what was going on um, I'm not overly concerned about it. I'm actually thinking about doing an EGR delete in, in the very near future anyway, because um, they are they can be troublesome at the best of times. And obviously if they clog, then you get all sorts of uh, emissions control um, errors on the dashboard. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so in, in a future video, I'll probably do an EGR delete and then that <laughs> removes the need for this vacuum control anyway. Still, let's move on. Um, okay, so what we need to do is we need to uh, remove the water pump. Now, all the bolts are removed, but it's pro I mean, it may come off with a good tug, to be honest. As you can see, I'm actually moving the engine, so so that's a no. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to give it a good, uh, a good beating with a nylon-faced hammer, um, and hopefully that'll get it off. If not, I may have to resort to something a little bit more drastic, but I'm not too concerned about um, actually damaging the water pump because obviously it's been replaced by a new one anyway. So. I'll have a go with this hammer and see how we get on. No, I think we're going to have to resort to something a little bit more drastic. Um, I'm going to try and find somewhere where I can prise I'm using a pry bar into the back of the water pump and I can feel with my finger just here above the main crank pulley I can feel there's like a little gap behind the main body of the water pump so I'm gonna get a pry bar and see if I can leave her in there very very gently right here we are under the car and just here is the underside of the water pump where I'm shining the torch now and there's a little ledge just there that I reckon I can get my pry bar onto so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go from underneath and give it a good uh, give it a good levering and hopefully that'll pop it off. It's well on there and it doesn't really want to move, but it's been on there for quite some time. So it's hardly a surprise. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to persevere and uh, hopefully it will come off um, without too much difficulty. And then we can move on to the next step. Go. 
and there we go as we can see I've split it and hopefully you can see the you can see the warp pump moving now so we're part way there towards getting it out um, I imagine there's probably some dowels uh, behind let's have a quick look behind uh, yes, if you look at that one, that hole there is slightly enlarged, as is that one. So I would imagine there's a dowel there and a dowel there. The others all look to be the same size. So yeah, the, the water pump is on, is sat on some dowels, so we do need to obviously get it off of those. I think we're there. Felt like it. Yep, we're almost there. Here we go. Pressed it too much. It kind of locks in place. And there we go. So there you go. There you can see the two doubles that I was talking about. So those will need to be removed uh, in order to be able to fit it, in order to be able to be fitted to the uh, the new one. But yeah, I mean it doesn't look in bad condition, it looks okay, and there's not really any play in here. But, you know, as I said before, it's uh, very cheap insurance uh, to avoid a breakdown caused by water pump failure. Which, as I said, I've experienced a few times. Okay, so there's a few things we need to do with this. Uh, namely, the dowel removal and the thermostat removal, because we do need to retain this part of the housing. So, uh, so yeah, that's what we'll do next. Right then, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo the four bolts on the thermostat housing. Again, as I said before, they won't be that tight because they should only be around about 10 newton meters anyway. They're probably the same bolt set. Hold on the, uh, oops on the water pump but they're actually not they're a lot shorter uh, as you can see We need to get this off without breaking it. And there we are. It's popped off. And there is the old gasket, uh, which we're going to discard because obviously we've got a brand new one. And you would always replace it anyway, because otherwise you're just going to get a leak. Now, uh, you can get these. Um, you can buy that part. Uh, it's actually quite expensive for what it is. Um, but if you're careful, you can remove it from the, uh, from the old water pump without any damage whatsoever, which is what I've just done here. And here is the old thermostat. Um, again, I believe it was working perfectly fine. Uh, you could test it by uh, dropping it into some hot water. And, and if you use a thermometer along with it, you can actually, um, you can actually check the, uh, the opening temperature on it and compare it to the manual to see if it's uh, working as it should at the correct temperature. Uh, but I'm not gonna bother because I've got a brand new one. So yeah, we're all good. Right, so what I need to do next is I need to gently remove these two uh, dowels. Now they may be uh, in there quite well, so I'm gonna get a little bit of heat on them. That one looks like it's starting to come out actually. I'm gonna get a bit of heat on them and make sure that they come out without any, uh, any damage because obviously I don't want to put them out of round uh, because there won't be much use. So I'll get these out and then I'll bring you back in when uh, we're ready to look at getting the new one all built up and then put back on the car. Okay, here we go. As you can see, I've got the two little uh, the two little dowels out. Um, they came out fairly easily, to be fair. What I did was I gave them uh, a good amount of heat with my, uh, my blowtorch um, and a little tip 
Um, imagine this is a drill bit. What I did was I got a drill bit that fitted perfectly snugly inside and then with a set of pliers used it to just twist it and with the drill bit in there it, it, it prevents from squashing so that's uh, that's a good idea just yeah just get one that fits snugly inside and then when you uh, when you clamp it with your pliers you're less likely to squash it um, and uh, it'll probably come out a lot easier especially when you put a bit of heat on there it, they came out really really easily um, but yeah the, uh, the danger is obviously squashing them <laughs> and making them useless because the bolts have got to go through them anyway moving on what we're going to do is ditch that we don't need it ditch that because we don't need it so i'll throw them over there and we are going to use this bit so this is uh, perfectly serviceable there's no cracks in it no damage whatsoever so what we need to do is we need to fit it to the new one and obviously as you can see it'll only go on in one orientation you can't get it wrong and um, it goes on just like so so what we need to do is we need to get our brand new thermostat out and our gasket and the thermostat goes in that way up you can see there's like a little ridge just there and that little ridge fits into that little ridge um, as far as orientation about its axis goes it doesn't really matter too much now um, what we're going to do is open up our new gasket and what I like to do with these rubber gaskets is get a little bit of, just a little dab of red rubber grease, nothing too drastic. And just gently coat the brand new gasket in it. And what it does is that rubber grease keep, keeps the gasket nice and supple and also helps in fitting. So it makes it a little bit tacky. And then when you fit it in, um, to uh, to whatever it is you're fitting it to um, it'll it'll be retained and won't fall off making it really hard to you know to fit now this gasket goes on one way as well you can see there's like a little nick there a little kink which isn't there on the other side so um, that little kink there goes down uh, in that point let me just quickly wipe the fingers all over my trousers and then what we need to do is fit this onto the, uh, the water pump. Now, that little stud there goes into that little hole there, and just like that. Now, what we need to do is apply a little bit of light pressure, and pop the bolts in. There is a little bit of, there is a little bit of spring pressure behind it, as you can see, but it'll be fine. four in okay now what we want to do is just nip these up just get them up to touch They're all just up to touch. I've not tightened them because what I'm going to do is obviously torque them down 10 newton meters each. It's not a massive torque. There's one, two, three, and four. And there we are. That is a the thermostat installed. Um, what we need to do next is obviously get the uh, dowels in to their respective locations 
get this gasket mounted up. Again, I'll put a bit of red rubber grease in. That'll just help seat it and it keeps the rubber supple, but also helps it stick slightly into the water pump so it doesn't fall off as we're trying to fit it onto the, uh, onto the cylinder head. So, here's the little, uh, here's the little dowels. One location there and one location there. You can't get them wrong because they're slightly, they're slightly bigger than uh, the other, than the other, uh, than the other holes are. And then I'll get my water pump gasket. Again, get a bit of red rubber grease. Don't need a lot. Don't need to go crazy. And I'm just going to coat the whole thing. And there we go, right. Let's fit it in position. And there we go. Right then, now we are ready to fit this to the cylinder head. So that is what we're gonna do next. Right then, as you can see, I've got the two dowels in their respective locations. So we are ready to pop this onto the uh, onto the head there's the gasket all uh, correctly mounted and what we're going to do is offer it up to the cylinder head and engage the dowels in their respective holes that is the idea and it should be fairly straightforward okay right There's one definitely engaged. Let's get some bolts in, which will hold it in place. And I think the other one is in. It's hard to, hard to tell. But what we'll do as we uh, tighten the bolts down, it'll pull the water pump into the correct position. or three started anyway what we want to do is though we want to get all of the bolts in and start it on their threads before we tighten any down otherwise you'll find that a couple of them just won't be lined up correctly so we've got four more to do so we'll get these four in and then we'll bring you back in okay we've got all all seven bolts now in and up to touch. I'm um, just going around and double checking that they're all up to touch, which they are. So what we need to do next is just talk them up. What I've done is the one that's behind here, the one that's really difficult to get to, I've already been in and talked that one because what I actually had to do in order to get to it properly was I had to take this pipe work off. It was a bit of a pain, but I'm in there now. And that one's all done. So. I'm happy with it. And last one. And there we are. That is them, all talked. 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do next uh, before I connect up the hoses is I'm going to get the belt back on. Now we do need to make sure we get the uh, orientation right so I'm fairly sure that I'm I can remember it. Um, but I'm going to quickly just double check in the manual just to uh, get it refreshed in my head uh, and then we'll get it on. Okay so from the alternator it comes down below the idler wheel over the top of the water pump underneath back round the crank 
like so. A little bit awkward because there's not a lot of room between between the crank and the water pump. And there we have a loop that's going to go around the tensioner. So what I need to do is put my tool inside the tensioner and then tighten it clockwise and then pop her on and then just make sure that the belt is sat properly on all the pulley wheels all the way around and it all looks good and there we go that is the correct orientation and we're all good happy days okay what's next is we need to connect up the hose for the uh for the thermostat and then uh we could top up the fluid now to connect the hose up simply a case of pushing it back on and closing the clip it really is that easy okay next we're going to top up the fluid and um i'll get the radiator uh, fan refitted uh, i'm not going to go through the process of topping up the fluid and all that good stuff because you've seen me do that before when um obviously i did the coolant change I'll, I'll stick the link to that in the top corner so you can see it now so i'll get the fan in um get the rest of the car put back together then i'll top up the fluid off the camera you don't need to see me do that so let's get the let's go get the fan in and we'll put that in next okay fan then at the bottom here we've got a couple of little pegs and if we look at the bottom of the radiator we can see just here and here where they locate in and obviously these on the other side obviously locate into the slots at the side of the radiator here and just here so i'll offer it in goes in pretty straightforward it's just a case of making any sure everything's lined up which we are i think Come on. That's it. Make sure we're in at the bottom. Yep, we're all good. Okay. So we're locked in there. And there we go, that just clicked in place. Clicked the electrical connector and then the single screw that holds the whole thing together. Just in there like so. That is that. Okay, next thing, top cover, and obviously the air duct, which is here. We'll get the air duct in place first. Again, it clicks into place, and then just make sure it matches up here. But we need to get this front end in, like so, and then match them up there we go just like that again it clicks into place and then the two screws last but not least will be the top cover now i'm not going to put this on just yet i'm going to give it a bit of a clean before i put it in um but it's straightforward um and then all i need to do then is obviously uh top up the coolant and uh, bleed the air out and um let it go up to temperature make sure every the thermostat opens that the level drops accordingly and that the fan comes on at the appropriate time once that happens i'll let it cool down and then i'll top up as required really is that easy anyway guys Hopefully you found this video useful, entertaining, or a combination of both. Um, 
I uh, haven't done a, uh, haven't done any BMW videos for quite a while. Uh, I've been mainly concentrating on the motorcycle ones uh, recently, um, mainly because the BMWs haven't required anything, um, and this water pump job was purely a preventative measure. There was nothing wrong with the one that I took off, but I do like to replace them periodically. Uh, in order to avoid any failure um, again as I said earlier having been uh, having been stranded by water pump failure in the past anyway guys um, feel free to leave a comment below like subscribe all the good stuff uh, again join me on the socials um, I'll leave links to all of those Facebook uh, Twitter and Instagram links in the uh, in the description below and what I'll also do, if you're interested in doing this, is I will leave uh, links to the parts that I bought um, to, to do this job. Obviously the thermostat, the water pump, and the, uh, the thermostat gasket actually came separately, so I'll link that as well. Uh, and then you can, uh, you can attempt this job yourself if you wish. Anyway guys, thank you very much for, for watching, and I will see you all again very soon for the next video. Take care, bye bye now. Oh,